Hi, this is Miss Lou, and today we're going to be talking about the Photopea interface. An interface is basically the screen that you see whenever you open up a program. Every program has an interface, and the interface is what allows you to interact with the program to do different things. Some of the menus or some of the things that you'll see in the Photopea interface are similar to things that you'll see in other programs and that's done on purpose that's so that if you do open up a new application that you've never used before you can kind of already orient yourself around the program and find your way um, to doing some of the simpler tasks for example the menu bar which is up here is the most common piece of the interface that you'll see in pretty much every application, whether it's an online application or a software application that's in your computer. The menu bar um, usually will start with file and usually will have edit right next to it. Anything beyond that is going to be customized to the program that you're using. I'm not going to go too far into what the um, all the menus are and what they have in them. Um, but I do want to address the fact that under file, this is where you would create a new project, open an existing project or, or image that you would use for a project. And then of course you can save um, and do all those basic things. And then under edit would be where you undo or redo, copy and paste and so on. Right under the menu bar is the options bar. And before I show you what the options bar does, I have to show you also the toolbar. And the best way to think about an interface is like if this is your virtual desk. So this dark gray area is basically like your tabletop. Um, maybe these menus are things that are sitting on top of your desk that you can easily access, you know, things that you maybe always access like a roll of tape or, you know, things like that, scissors, pens, you know, uh, that you often use. And then the, this toolbar right here for Photopea is your drawer where you keep all your specialized tools that you don't necessarily always want to have out, but they're tucked in a drawer so that you can easily get to them. Now, when I click on a tool, you'll notice the options changing in here. Right now I have my text or my type tool selected, and you'll see that in the options, it gives me the ability to change the font of my text. I can change the size, the color, and the alignment and then do some little fancier things with it. If I clicked on my brush tool, you'll notice the options bar changes. That's because with a brush tool, I can't change a font. That wouldn't make sense. But what I can do is change the size of my brush, even the style of my brush. I can change the size and the, um, the, hardness or softness. So do I want it more blurry or more crisp? And then um, the, again, there's some fancier things that we'll get into later on through this course. The right side holds all of your palettes. Um, the history palette is a great palette to use. And I know in the menu bar, I showed you the undo redo. The history is basically an undo redo, but I'll show you why you would want to use the history palette versus going up to edit and constantly doing an undo or redo. And then the layers palette right here, which uh, I'll go over in more detail in a different unit. So we've already looked at how to create a new workspace. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open one up just so that we have one. Oops, that's probably a little too small. And again, I'm working in pixels. That's usually a little bit easier for me. And I'm going to keep it at the default of 72 DPI, but this time I want a transparent background. 
If you recall from a previous video, uh, you will know that your background is transparent by the checkerboard pattern, which means that anything that sits on top is going to be um, not have like a white background behind it or things like that. It'll just be something floating on its own. So I do want to address the history palette just really briefly, just so that um, you understand what why you'd want this palette. Um, and the easiest thing to do is use the brush tool. I'm just going to paint a color and then maybe I'm going to do another color. And let's say you've done lots of different things. Maybe you erased here and erase there. Whatever you did, if you notice every single move of my mouse was recorded as a step in the history palette. So the great thing, it's almost like a timeline. That's the best way to think about it. So what's great about this is if I wanted to return just back to my initial first brush um, of white, I could go up to edit and undo and then I'd have to keep going up to edit and undoing until I got to the uh, step that I wanted. The easier thing to do would be to go backwards in the timeline or in the steps and click on the step that you want to go back to. Now, as soon as I do another, or I'm sorry, I need my brush. As soon as I do another motion with my mouse, you'll see that anything underneath that was erased and um, it's replaced by the new step. So again, you'll see, watch the where it says eraser tool and brush tool. And as soon as I let go of my mouse, it replaced it with my last brush. So using the history is much easier than undoing. The only little tip or, or caution I have is that if you, it only records up to a certain amount of history before it starts rewriting on top. So if I were to do something on my workspace and each click, I'm clicking, 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 it's recording each separate click, you'll notice at a certain point, I won't be able to go too far back anymore. So I've never really counted to see how many clicks it would take before it starts rewriting over. Um, but at a certain point, it will and you so if you know that you've done something wrong or something that you want to go back into don't keep doing individual clicks um, because it'll be too late and you won't be able to go far back enough and here you go i did two more clicks and now i can't go all the way back to the beginning anymore this is as far back as i can go on my history so this concludes my really quick tutorial on how to use the interface of Photopea. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.